Hello everybody and here is a lovely papa to make a smile before we start learning about the kidney. So here we can see the kidney. This is the right one. It looks very similar to the left. I'm sure you can imagine if it was just mirrored. So um, I just want you to think contextually about where your kidneys are. So just pop your hands on your back just above your pelvis and that's where your kidneys are. So we can see they are very rich in blood and they've got the adrenal glands sat on the top, which releases adrenaline, totally separate function to the kidneys. And then we can see the ureter coming out of the bottom and the ureter would lead down to the bladder. So once urine has been produced by the kidneys, it gets sent down to the bladder where it is stored and then it's released out of the urethra. So let's just have a quick look at this diagram here showing that whole thing in detail. Now this guy uh, is horribly deformed. I don't know why his kidneys are like up here. I mean, literally, just below his nipples, that is really odd. So this is a knot where your kidneys are. Your kidneys are more like here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this diagram. Maybe they just wanted to show a nice long ureter leading down into the bladder and then out the urethra. So we can see here that the renal artery leads into the kidneys and the renal artery comes directly off the aorta so blood traveling through the renal artery is traveling at high pressure and then blood leaves the kidney via the renal vein and then once urine is produced in the kidney it travels down the ureter into the bladder and then it will leave hopefully at an appropriate time so here you can see this cut through of the kidney. So you can see what the inside looks like. And it's got this beautiful image inside where they're cut into these like little pyramid shapes. They're called the renal pyramids. And then these all basically lead down towards the pelvis. So this whole tissue, the whole organ is essentially made up of loads and loads of blood vessels and these structures which are called nephrons. And we'll look at the nephrons in a little bit more detail later on. Um, but it's very blood rich, which is why we've got these red sections here, these pyramids, and then it leads down into the pelvis. So the urine essentially drains down into the pelvis and then down into the ureter. So this is just summarizing what we just said. Let's have a look at this diagram of the kidney. So, this structure here, this one, this funny little wiggly wiggly thing, whoop, this is the nephron, okay? The nephron is really the site of filtration, so it is where the urine is produced. And when we're actually talking about the functioning of the kidney, this is the place that we will focus. Um, now, the outer layer of the kidney, you can't really see it very well on this diagram, but if we had an actual kidney in front of us, we'd be able to see. It's covered in this really thin membrane, which is called the capsule. And it's easier for us for, to very quickly label the renal artery, the renal vein, and the ureter. And then we've got the cortex. The cortex is this outer part here. And then we've got the medulla. The medulla is this inner part. And like we said before, the medulla is made up of these renal pyramids. Then, so we've got cortex, medulla, pelvis. The section in the middle is the pelvis. These other words you don't really need to worry about. So I don't want you to particularly worry about words like interlobular vein, interlobular artery. That's just what these things are pointing at here. And they're just the veins and arteries that run between the lobes of the renal pyramids. And then the other label you've got down here is collecting duct. So um, the collecting duct is just referring to a particular part of the nephron, this very last part of the nephron here. So. Don't stress about that for now, that'll be important later on. Okay, so that's the gross structure of the kidney. Let's have a little look at this lovely cut up version of the kidney. So I hope you're not squeamish, but uh, you can see how the pelvis here in the middle has um, is made of these connective tissue here, this connective tissue, and then we've got this um, blood rich tissue 
all around the outside. So the kidney is essentially made of millions and millions of nephrons. So the functional unit of filtration is the nephron. Now, I was reading an article about like what is the number of nephrons in the kidney, and I read this really interesting thing that was saying that based on autopsy specimens from individuals representing various ethnic groups, there is a huge variation in human nephron number. And there's basically no such thing as like a normal number of nephrons in an adult human kidney. So kidneys can contain anywhere between about 200,000 and over 1.8 million nephrons. Uh, which is an enormous difference. Um, so I thought it was quite interesting. So take a look at this diagram. So what you're seeing in blue is the nephron. And this is the unit of filtration. And what you are seeing in red is the blood vessels that surround the nephron. Now, one of the problems with any two-dimensional drawing is it's really hard to visualize what this really looks like. So we've seen this quite, you know, uh, flat and um, simplistic image, but the, the whole body of the kidney is just full of these nephrons all jam-packed in together and all totally surrounded by blood vessels. So obviously in this diagram, they've just drawn this blood vessel like on one side, but I need you to understand that the blood vessel actually just totally wraps its way all the way around. They're everywhere. They're everywhere, just wrapped around the whole of the nephron. So the nephron is completely covered in every way in blood vessels, in capillaries. And these capillaries are sort of all in this space, they're all in this space, they're everywhere. This whole area around the nephron is absolutely covered in capillaries. It's just that if you showed that in a diagram, it would be ridiculous because you wouldn't be able to see the nephron, so it would be pointless. So let's just get rid of those. So you just have to use your imagination. The other line that's really important on this diagram is this line that you're seeing here. So this line is showing you the area between the renal cortex and the renal medulla. So it's important that you can visualize where this is. So everything below this dotted line is in the medulla and everything above this dotted line is in the cortex. So I would recommend you go back to your diagram of the kidney and you just look at that for a second so you understand which part of the nephron is where. So. Let's just get rid of that. And then let's have a go at labeling the nephron. So we're gonna start off just labeling the ne nephron and then we will label the blood vessels that are associated with the nephron. So right here at the top, we have got the Bowman's capsule, okay? So this bit here is the Bowman's capsule. Now again, I know I've already said this, but this is a two dimensional drawing. This is three dimensional, okay? You have to think about this like a, like a cup like there's a whole big ball of blood vessels, like a ball of string inside a cup. That is a much better way of thinking about it rather than this sort of very two-dimensional image that you begin in here. Like here it looks like this, right? But it's not like that, it's a cup. So if you were to look at it downwards, if you look down on it, you'd have an inside and then an outside and, and then inside, you've got a load of blood vessels on the inside. So. Just always bear in mind that everything is three dimensional. So from the Bowman's capsule, we go down into the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, proximal convoluted tubule, that's a complicated word. It just means first wiggly tube. That's all it means. And then from there, we go down into the loop of Henley. Loop of Henley, what a great name. Uh, it's named after a guy called Henley. He has an extremely long name uh, that I'm not even gonna try and pronounce because I will probably say it wrong. Uh, so then we've got the loop of Henley, the descending limb, so the limb that goes down. Then we've got the apex of the loop of Henley. And then we've got the ascending limb, the bit that goes up. And then we go into the distal convoluted tubule. That just means the second wiggly tube. They just like to use complicated words to confuse you. And so they feel special. And then we go into the final part of the nephron, which is called the collecting duct. This is where the urine is collected. Um, sometimes that name can make it seem a little bit passive, like nothing's happening there, but actually the collecting duct is a really important part of the whole process of urine formation. It's where the actual osmoregulation occurs. So let's not 
um, let's not forget about it. So they're the parts of the nephron, the names that you need to know. And then what names do you need to know in terms of the blood vessels? Well, you need to know the name of the blood vessel going in. The blood vessel coming in here at the Bowman's capsule is called the afferent, afferent the one coming in, afferent arteriole. And then the afferent arteriole splits up into a big ball of capillaries called the glomerulus. And then that goes back into the efferent arteriole. So they're really the only names of blood vessels that you need to know and then you need to understand that all these other blood vessels you can see here these are all capillaries that wrap themselves around the nephron so it's really important that you can label the nephron and we are going to spend quite a bit of time talking about each individual part of the nephron okay I think this diagram is super super important so the first reason I think it's important is that it contextualizes where the nephron is within the kidney so just take a look here so you can see here's the kidney and you can see how the um, glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule and the PCT the proximal convoluted tubule and the DCT in the top of the collecting duct so the DCT is the distal convoluted tubule these are all in the cortex and then the loop of Henle and the bottom of the collecting duct these are in the medulla so it's really important to understand where they all sit you can see that really nicely here. The other thing that I think it's really important you understand is how all of these nephrons are sort of linked to each other. They're not individual, they're not separate units of filtration. So you can see how this um, nephron has its uh, distal convoluted tubule that then links into the collecting duct here and then this one has its distal convoluted tubule that links into the collecting duct here and then the collecting duct look, there'll be another one over there and another nephron there, another one there, another one there and so on and so on. So they'll all start to collect together and the collecting ducts will just get bigger and bigger as they go down like the trunk of a tree until eventually all the collecting ducts have linked together and then the collecting duct, see we see how this is happening here, all the collecting ducts are linking together until we get into the pelvis where all the collecting ducts basically drain into and together all the ends of the collecting ducts, they become the ureter. So it's really important you understand that. So there'll be all these collecting ducts linking together here eventually draining into the pelvis and then sending the formed urine down the ureter. It's really important that you can contextualize that in your head. You know, when we're spending a whole lesson just talking about what happens here and then another whole lesson just talking about what happens here, you know, it's easy for these things to become really abstract, but you have to be able to see it in the context of the whole thing. Okay, so that's everything you need to know about the gross structure of the kidney. So the labels of the overall parts that like we talked about, the, the capsule, the cortex, the medulla, the pelvis, uh, and then the fact that we've got all these nephrons, and then the ultrastructure of the nephron itself. So well done for listening to all that. You will be tested on the names of all the different parts. Um, I'll speak to you soon.